in your position, I would have done the same thing. I don't blame you. And I'm glad you all survived. I guess I should have explained how Mars missions work. For any layman who may be reading this. We got to Earth orbit the normal way through an ordinary ship to Hermes. All the Ares missions use Hermes to get to and from Mars. It's really big and caused a lot to NASA, so they only built one. Once we got to Hermes, four additional unmanned missions brought us fuel and the supplies while we prepared for our trip. Once everything was a go, we set out for Mars. But not very fast. Gone are the days of heavy chemical fuel burns and trans Mars injectional orbits. Hermes is powered by ion engines. They throw Argon on the back of the ship really fast to get a tiny amount of acceleration. The thing is, it doesn't take much to recap Mars, so a little Argon and a nuclear reactor power things let us accelerate constantly the whole way there. You'll be amazed at how fast you can get going with a tiny acceleration over a long time. I could regale you with the tales of how we had great fun on the trip, but I won't. I don't feel like revealing it right now. Suffice it to say, we got to Mars 124 days later without strangling each other. From there we took the MDV, the Mars Descent Vehicle, to the surface. The MDV is basically a big can with some light thrusters and a parachute attached. Its sole purpose is to get six humans from Mars orbit to the surface without killing any of them. And now we come to the real trick of Mars exploration. Having all of our shit there in advance. A total of 14 unmanned missions deposited everything we would need for the surface operations. They tried their best to land all the supply vessels in the same general area and did a reasonably good job. Supplies aren't nearly so fragile as humans and can hit the ground really hard. But they tend to bounce around a lot. Naturally, they didn't send us to Mars until they'd confirmed all the supplies had made it to the surface and their containers were breached. Start to finish, including supply missions, a Mars mission takes about three years. In fact, there were Ares 3 supplies en route to Mars, while the Ares 2 crew were on their way home. The most important piece of the advanced supplies, of course, was the MAV, the Mars Ascent Vehicle. That was how we would get back to Hermes after the surface operations were complete. The MAV was short landed. As opposed to the balloon bounce vest that the other supplies had. Of course it was constant communication with Houston and there was any problems with it. We would pass by Mars and go home to Earth without ever landing if we discovered any problems. The MAV is pretty cool, turns out though, a neat set of chemical reactions within the Martian atmosphere. For every kilogram of hydrogen you bring to Mars, you can make 13 kilograms of fuel. It's a very slow process though. It takes 24 months to fill a tank. That's why they sent it long before we got here. You can imagine how disappointed I was when I discovered the MAV was gone. It was a ridiculous sequence of events that led me to what was dying and an event more ridiculous that led to my surviving. The mission is designed to handle sandstorms gusts up to 150 miles per hour, so Houston got understandably nervous when we got whacked with the 175. We all got in our suits and huddled in the middle of the hab, just in case we lost pressure. But the hab wasn't the problem, the MAV is a spaceship. It had a lot of dedicated particles. It can put with a lot of storms and certain extent, but it can't just get sandblasted forever. After an hour and a half of sustained wind, NASA gave the order to abort. Nobody wanted to stop a month-long mission 
as it suddenly pressurized drop trestle me and made wound in my side scream in agony I got the breech kit off the hole and sealed it it held the suit pack filled the missing air with yet more oxygen checking my arm readouts I saw the suit was now 85% oxygen for reference Earth's atmosphere is about 21% I'd be okay as long as I didn't spend too much time like that I stumbled up the hill back towards the hub as I as I crested the rise I saw something that made me very happy and something that made me very sad the hub was intact which was very good news but the MAV was gone right that moment I knew I was screwed but I didn't want to just die I want the surface I leapt back to the hub and fumbled my way back into the airlock as soon as it was equalised I threw off my helmet entering the hub I doffed the suit and got my first good look at the injury it would need stitches suffice to say fortunately all of us had been trained in basic medical procedures and the hub had excellent medical supplies a quick shot of local anaesthetic irrigate the wound nine stitches and I was done I'd be taking antibiotics for a couple of weeks but other than that I'm sure I'd be fine I knew it was hopeless but I tried firing up the communications array no signal of course the primary satellite dish had been broken off remember and it took the reception antenna with it the hub had secondary and tertiary communication systems but they were both just talking to the MAV which used much more powerful systems to relay to the Hermes thing is only works if the MAV is still around I had no way to talk to Hermes in time I could locate the dish out on the surface but it would take weeks for me to rig up any repairs and that would be too late in an abort the Hermes would leave orbit within 24 hours the orbital dynamics made the trip safer and shorter the earlier you left so I wait for no reason just to make the trip longer checking out my suit I saw the antenna had ploughed through my biomonitor computer when on the EVA the crew suits all networked so we could see each other's statuses the rest of the crew would have seen my pressure in my suit drop to nearly zero followed immediately by my bio signs going flat at that I was sent tumbling down a hill with a spear through me in the middle of a sandstorm yeah. they thought I was dead how could they not they may have even had a brief discussion about recovering my body but regulations were clear in the event of a crewman died on Mars he stayed on Mars leaving his body behind a reduced weight for the MAV on the trip back that meant more disposable fuel and a larger margin of error for the return thrust no point in giving that up for sentimentality so that's the situation I'm stranded on Mars I have absolutely no way to communicate with the Hermes or Earth everyone thinks I'm dead I'm in the hub designed to last 31 days if the oxygenator breaks down I'll suffocate if the water reclamator breaks down I'll die of thirst if the hub breaches I'll just kind of explode if none of those things happen I'll eventually run out of food and starve to death so yeah I'm fine